this will be a complete end-to-end -end edit of uh, this picture here um, from start to finish um, I'm not going to edit this video so you'll see me make any mistakes or go back on uh, what I thought I was going to do or try something different or you know um, it'll be a real world editing experience so without further ado let's get into it and um, I've already been through the uh, the ribbon and you know had a look at uh, some of the images and uh, we're going to do this one and I like the pose in this one Kerry's got the uh, the sword right behind her there and I, I like this gesture um, so we're going to go for that there's some other sort of I quite like the um, the fog earlier on where it got a bit more mellow um, and I did look at these as well but I think this is going to be um, our starting point so first of all I'm going to look at the image and just think about um, the colour and the exposure because while we're working in RAW in Lightroom we've got all the information um, that the camera captured for this frame um, so this is the best time to do that sort of stuff so I'm looking around at the image and I think the face is a bit dark is the first thing that stands out and this is kind of the order that I do this in it's just what grabs me first and once I've done that something else will stick out so the way I'm going to do this is fairly easy we're going to get a, a radial gradient just draw that over the face like that and we're going to raise the exposure a little bit not too much not about that much but also along with it of course we want to maintain the contrast so we're going to turn the whites up a little bit try the shadows yeah maybe benefit from a little bit of shadow raising so everything is is raised let's have a look at that on and off or actually it's easier to do the on and off here so we don't have all those ellipses over it yeah and I think that's about right maybe just reduce the blacks a little bit I might just get a bit more contrast in at the bottom end there we go all right so is there anything else we want to do to this so, so this this bit of this looks a little bit blown out just here so um what weapon shall we use for this? So I think we'll just try a global adjustment, just reducing the highlights a bit. Yeah, that kind of does it. So I'm looking around the image to see if it changes anything else that I don't want it to change, and it, it kind of isn't. Um, there's a little bit of a change on the blue. Um, I can dial that down on the yellow quite a bit and get a bit more detail on there. Of course, sometimes it does look better when it's all blown out, but I think in this case <coughs> it is going to look a, bit, a little bit better. Let's go down to the hue, saturation and luminance panel. And in luminance, I'm just going to try and drag, drag that up just a little bit. And let's have a, just a little fiddle with the, um, yeah, I think a little bit of shadow raising is going to be in order. Uh, don't really need to want don't want to do anything with the blacks at this moment I try and keep um, as much not introduce too much contrast at this stage because um, whatever I do now when I when I open Photoshop all, all of this will be baked in it's a 16-bit tiff so there's still quite a bit of latitude in there but uh, if we do need to introduce contrast I'll do that right at the very end so let's have a look uh, at what else just raising the whites, look at the old histogram. Now when I'm looking at the histogram, watch this bit here. And as I adjust the whites, can you see it sort of peak and bunch up? You don't really want that. That's a sign of um, an increase of one value. So remember this is a histogram, it's a count of values. So when you see peaks rising like that, that means there's a lot of that value all of a sudden, and there wasn't to begin with. So you know you're posterizing the image there, you're flattening it slightly. Uh, when those peaks arise so we really want that we'll, so we'll, we'll bring that back I think let me just do it a little bit there okay um, now we're also going to mess a little bit with the uh, white balance and see which looks best because you can go you know to these sort of extremes and it starts to look a little bit green, so we can compensate for that. So we could have a, you know, that sort of image. 
but I'm feeling on this one that it needs to go a little bit warmer. Um, so we're almost zeroing out that blue gel that was in the overhead light, uh, which is then having the, uh, the effect of warming everything else up. And I think generally a warming of this image could be best. So let's check. That's where we started and that's where we are. I think that's about right. Let's go back to that radial gradient in a second. Now that we've done that, and I think we'll try a bit more shadow maybe. Maybe just a touch more of everything. Bring that black down. There we go. Now all this, this sort of bags under the eyes, I'll deal with that in Photoshop. Um, can't be helped. Everyone's going to have that. Uh, even um, models like Kerry. So I think that's about it for um, Lightroom in this case. So we're going to dive over into Photoshop now for the cleanup. So we right click, edit in, Photoshop and uh, drink some coffee. Mm. Just talk amongst yourselves. It'll be here in a minute. Okay, here we go. Let's tidy up a bit. Um, I will go there for the time being. Um, let's spin that off. Right. So first order of business is we're going to tidy up. So immediately I can see there's um, the beauty dish, I think. I think it was a beauty dish, small beauty dish. Um, so we're going to get the polygonal lasso. You could use, you know, use any selection tool of your choice, really. But you've got to leave quite a bit of a board around this because we're going to use content to air fill for this. Uh, which is under, it's not a good place for me to be. Let's go over the, the histogram because no one ever uses that in Photoshop. Um, so here we are. Um, I've got this bound to a key, uh, F5. I think by default it's Shift F5 in Photoshop. Um, don't quote me on that. Um, but things that you use a lot, and I use Contour Wear Fill a lot for cleanup like this, worth bounding to a key. So let's go on that and we just wait. Photoshop does its thing, and away it goes. Deselect. Let's have a look around the image for any less obvious um, bits of grip, um, stands, lights, etc. And I think in this case we're pretty lucky. Okay, the the fog has pretty much hidden every, all of it. So the next stage, I'm going to do a bit of liquify uh, and just tidy up. Um, this outfit is a little bit unfortunate in that it's, it looks like a corset, but it's not boned. Um, it doesn't have a, a frame in it as such. So, you know, it, it just has pulls and it, it can do some quite unfortunate things to your figure. So we will um, help out a little bit and put that right. <clears throat> so first of all, I'm gonna tidy up um, any sort of uh, little sort of pinches and pulls that look a little bit obvious. So match the size of this forward warp tool to the size of the uh, the radius of the of the curve that you're trying to adjust. Um, so as you're pulling those things out, it's going to get bigger and bigger, like so. I'm going to go back down, do that last that one there, do that little pinch point. Bigger, bigger. There we go. Now we don't want to make it completely straight because you know there would be um, little pigs and troughs to this, but I want to really create a shape rather than have all that sort of bunched up um, business. So not really, not really too much else to do on that one. That's about it. Right, so let's now look at more general shape. Now this does have the unfortunate effect of um, squashing breasts, this um, outfit. So we're just going to restore that and just pull that down a bit. 
again this side is nearer the camera so it's going to be bigger so we make the brush bigger and just pull it out um, to where it's likely to be if you want to see that you've gone too far I'll just um, press P um, to turn the preview off and on always some people have a quite a pronounced sticky out elbow Kerry's elbows are quite neat so that's not I don't need to do a lot to that it's too much right so let's think about waste uh, so again this outfit is a little bit unfortunate for that sort of thing so I'm just going to pull the waistline up and in a little bit use a really big brush for this right you, you this is not something you really want to be messing around with too much in terms of detail um, and make a shoulders a little bit broader there so just pull everything out make sure the arms are still straight as you're doing this another thing is hair um, as this was a tutorial session I didn't shoot when we remembered by the time we remembered to get the um, um, devil's own hair dryer out that I use on set for blowing hair um, so I don't have a shot with the uh, the hair flying which was much more effective but we'll just tease it out a little bit and you can see that I'm just doing little little dabs along there you don't want to sort of go for broke on this stuff and again we can look at the before and after on the P key I think do we need to do anything else um, I think we might the lighting is really accentuating every little lump and bump which is very unkind to the model so we'll just straighten that up a little bit there we go right just tuck the jawline in slightly let's have a look so this is the sort of face face aware stuff got to be careful with this okay now there are some things that work all right i found that um the eye size thing is fairly natural um i tilt can be quite useful for adjusting expressions but don't use it too much um, things that don't work is the smile thing don't, don't do that that just does not work um, mouth height sometimes works if you want to give them more of an open mouth more of a screen going on um, that's about it I think I'd, I'd probably stay away from most of these things to be fair um, <laughs> you end up with some kind of grotesque results um, and people will spot them straight away now okay so there's nothing else that we need to tidy up via tucking um, that kind of looks right um, that looks fairly natural um, that's about it I feel okay so that's that's it for the liquify wait for that to write the mesh and apply it to the full size image and there we go right okay so now we're going to do some skin cleanup and for this I'm going to use the regular healing brush and this is the one that where you sample and dab so I'll go back over there in the corner okay so we want to get the brush just a little bit bigger than the things that we're dabbing away and then just sample um, from uh, clean areas and go over it now you don't have to resample every time but just be aware that wherever you dab it will where it samples from will be relative to the brush will stay the same All right so you know when you get here you don't really be doing that because it's going to get it from the hair above um, so every now and again you're going to need to resample but when you're getting on just doing isolated bits on otherwise clean areas you can just keep it the same and just quickly dab on everything um, now we don't need to fix everything in one go right there's multiple passes and multiple techniques that we're going to use this on this um, you could try and fix everything in one go using this tool but I wouldn't recommend it so some things you know if you see me ignoring some things it's probably because um, subconsciously I know that we're going to come back and do that um, in another pass now this can take a few goes I find because you haven't got a lot of space to sample from 
um, but it's working okay. There we go. And again, we will tidy this on another pass in a minute. Just watch where your sampling cross is going, that it's not straying into somewhere unfortunate. Now, this is a creative image, right? So I have no compunction or reservations about um, removing any and all uh, lumps and bumps. Um, if you're doing like a family portrait or something, you probably would leave like moles and permanent fixtures on people's faces because it's what makes them them. Um, but this is a made up character that Kerry is playing. And um, she's a professional model and does not mind me doing this and removing. That didn't really work, did it? So um, I'm pressing Control Z just to undo things that don't work. As you remove the bigger blemishes, the smaller ones start to become more prominent. And you could sit here forever and do this. So it's important to know when to stop. Um, and as I said earlier, there will be more effective techniques coming along in the next few minutes that will deal with some of this other stuff. All right. Okay, so we can go across lines like that. We can dab, and now I'm not having to resample so much, oh, <laughs> but I should have done. All right, so make sure we do, don't want to put, try and put yellow bits of fog on skin. It's going to get really confused. When you go up to an edge, make sure you line it up. Let's get all these little creases out. I'm doing this with a pen, by the way, with a Wacom um, pen, there it is, and a tablet. It's a small tablet, A5 tablet, bought it from John Lewis years ago, it was about 40 quid. Um, I really like the small one. I've had this years, uh, and it's uh, super smooth now, super shiny as well. Um, but I'm on the uh, original nib. Um, And it's still working okay. Now I shot these at f5.6, which I don't normally do. I think I was trying to, because it was a workshop, we were um, trying to get the lights to recycle quicker and not worry too much about that. So you can see that some of this stuff is actually out of focus, but that's okay. Um, we've got enough depth of the focus. Uh, just check around the rest of the skin for other stuff that you might want to clone out. And this is interesting. Right, I don't know if it's just me, but Photoshop does this. Um, and it's uh, it's worth, it's got a useful learning point, right? Um, it has it has crashed, right? Um, but um, it's only the uh, picture window, the image window that isn't responding, right? I can still click on these things, but I can no longer drag that. Right, nothing is happening. So what I need to do at this point is save it. And this will not update, it is saving it. Um, and close it. And it will close now when it's finished saving. It's really annoying, quite frankly. Um, and this bug was introduced two, three years ago, and they've been through many, many versions since then. I've lodged this, several other people have lodged it. It's still not fixed. Um, but um, as you can see, the, the image has been saved um, and we can just open it again. 
but this time I'm doing edit original, I don't want to make more copies of that. I just want to reopen the file that we just closed. It's really, really annoying. Sometimes you can go for um, uh, weeks without that happening. So, but we're blessed tonight. <laughs> the, the gods or devils of Photoshop were smiling upon us. Um, and now we try and remember what on earth it was we were doing. And I think we'd kind of finished with the spot healing brush. Um, oh yes, yeah, so I was about to talk about tattoos. Now, Kerry's got quite a number of tattoos. Um, don't really mind them for this kind of shoot. Um, and I think we're just gonna leave that one there. Quite a badass sort of warrior sort of character. If she had like tattoos of kittens or something on there, I might remove those. But um, this one actually says Bon Top. Um, but you can't really read it. And the other one's fairly abstract. Some sort of owl. Could be some sort of warrior owl cult. Um, so uh, I'm gonna leave them. Right, so now we are going to set up a frequency separation layer set. So what this does is it's going to separate the texture um, from the rest of the information in the file. And the idea is, is that everything that is blurred in this in this preview will be on the texture layer and everything that's not blurred will be on the low frequency tones and color layer. Um, so if we want to do this from scratch, then we would move the blur slider until all the texture goes away because we want to preserve that. We're going to mess with the tones. And to be honest, I know that for a sort of three quarter figure like this, um, six or thereabouts is going to be about the right number. Now, I'm using a pre-recorded action to do this. It's actually quite simple to do. You create two layers, um, and there's I think there's some there's some high pass filtering going on on this one. There's some apply image and stuff like that. Um, I can't remember to be honest. But if anyone's interested, just write to me. I'll send you the action. Um, I've got it exported. I've sent it to many people in the past. Um, if you don't want to be bothered to record this yourself. If you are interested in the maths, obviously you can Google for frequency separation. Okay, so we're happy with that. We'll let the rest of that action complete. And it starts off on the uh, low frequency layer. Almost all of the work that I'm going to do on this now is going to be on that low frequency layer. Occasionally, if you've got um, really bad skin texture, say stretch marks or some other you know, scars, massive scars or something like that that you can't heal, um, I sometimes use the patch tool on the high frequency layer, right? And move it to a good piece of skin. But on this image right now, I don't have any cause to do that. So it's really just gonna be about that low frequency layer just there. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is just blur those um, tones and colors together. Now again, I've got the Gaussian blur bound to a button on my tablet because I use it a lot. I'm going to go for you know this sort of size. I know that typically the value that I use to separate the texture from the tones is the value that I need to go for for sort of facial features. So I'm going to OK that, but I need a few more. And you might think, well, why don't you just use a bigger value? And I might use it a bigger value on, on uh, just that bit there. Um, but it tends to produce a flatter result. So we're going to go for 10 on this one, bang that in. Now, it doesn't matter how many times I do this, it isn't going to reduce the texture anymore. Um, some of the texture will be on that low frequency layer, right? Because we didn't, you know, it's never perfect. Um, but all it's really doing is just evening out um, those big areas of tone underneath. And that's what I want. Um, you don't want too much to give impact to the image. You want really just the big overall pieces of color and light to play more of a, a part. Um, now I don't really want to include things like the mouth, but I will mask this out after. But the reason why 
I deselect these obvious pieces of detail is that they get drawn into the blur and therefore discolour the surrounding area as well. Um, so I tend to just deselect any really obviously high contrast and you can use the shift key to add and the alt key to take away from these selections. And I'm just using the regular lasso tool. So again, um, got my other button. Now that's too much because I had it set to uh, 10 again, didn't I? So let's put it back to six. Um, but I've got the other button on my tablet um, bound to repeat last action, repeat last filter. So I can keep thumping it to apply more Gaussian blur to that tone layer. Now if we zoom out and um, we uh, turn the frequency separation layer on and off, you can see that it's removed those highlights, which are a bit distracting. Um, also a good way of producing shine. Uh, on skin is to uh, just blur um, the edges uh, of the shine to reduce those specular highlights and see a little patch there I'm going to just smooth away and we'll do another little bit in there as well and there we go as I said earlier we're going to mask some of this off some of the edges in a minute which will make it look a bit more natural so if your eye sees sharp bits where you want them it's more, your mind's more likely to accept the soft bits. I think one go on that, so I undid one of those clicks there. We're just gonna have one, I think, on this. Um, scary skin is pretty good, actually. It's, you know, there's no blotches or anything like that. Um, so we don't need to do too much, but I do want sort of, um, I don't want that sort of mottling and stuff like that. I'm going to go a bit more on that one. In fact, let's undo a couple of those because we only really want the extra on this little bit here, which looks a bit muddy. And we're going to go for 10. There's another technique we might use on some of this skin uh, after, which is a more uh, traditional inverted high pass layer. I've got a bit too much texture there. There we go. Now, the hands kind of don't need anything doing to them. The legs kind of look all right as well, to be honest, but um, we're going to do a little bit on the legs. There we go. Maybe not that much. Just go back to six. Just one go. Depends on the light that you're using, but you know, the legs very often require quite a bit of um, uh, blurring on the tone layer um, but I think we've got some um, quite a lot of fill in this image you'll see that it's blurring these sort of strands here and we don't really want that but we'll mask that off um, in a minute uh, when we've finished with this and it's not really worth doing those little bits in there nothing to see there hands are okay we're kind of done with this really so let's go on for that masking um, so we're going to get a black brush, soft black brush, 100% opacity and flow, and um, just go over the bits that we definitely don't want any of that unification to be affecting. So around the edges of everything, right, around the mouth, even though we did, and, we, and shadow edges as well, eyes of course, I don't want any of it on the eyes. The hairline there. Um, if we zoom in, you can see what we're masking away. So we're going to go around there like that. And also, this little shadow area here is going to crispen up that shadow edge again down the neckline. Zoom out a bit around that hair. Any creases or anything like that you don't really want to do this on because you end up getting sort of double doubling up. Looks like double vision. We should remove that little tag thing I think in a minute, whatever that is. Um, let's go around the edge of there. Done that bit already. If you want to check where you've been, let's do that tattoo. 
little check where you've been just all click on the mask and you can see the drawing and you can see that you know we could fill in any sort of gaps there um, in those chunks of drawing and you can see which bits you've done so far and go down that little strand there down that down that there and you can see this looks really bad here, right? So we're just going to just blend that away. Uh, go around the edges of the tattoo. We didn't go up to the edges of the leg. Um, we did do that side. This side. Do all of these little strands. Down this edge. I think did we do that little section in there as well I think and that's pretty much it um, so a quick check yep that all looks good stop it there that looks a bit excessive doesn't it just put that back in I think I must have uh, been a bit overzealous there with my mask in we go okay <clears throat> and it's crashed again Adobe sort yourselves out right packed with features this software but you can't write software to save your life this is terrible so I'm gonna have to save it again And now we've got layers. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna have to yeah, we're gonna have to save it with the layers, which I don't do. I don't really save these files with layers. I know people do, but I'm not gonna come back ever and fiddle with this. Um, and they just take up too much room on the disk. You can see uh, expanded this is 813 meg and it's 260 meg on the disk but if you kept all the layers it'd probably be oh you know it'd be a couple of gig by the time you'd finished at least um, you don't really want that so I'll close that again see it's nicely updated back in Lightroom that bit does work pretty well if only they would fix Photoshop write it properly so that it didn't just randomly crash i mean i could be doing adobe a disservice maybe it's the video driver or something like that but you know i keep that up to date it's not a homemade graphics card you know it's an nvidia <laughs> 1050 one of the mill nothing outlandish right okay it's all looking, already looking pretty good now uh, now we've done the cleanup um, we show what the cleanup has done and we can check for any areas where it's um, having an adverse effect and I think just in the cleavage there um, we're kind of losing a little bit of shadow detail so I might put that back so let's go back to the mask black brush come on Do it over here then and just touch that in there. As other odd things that Photoshop does, sometimes the keyboard shortcuts just do not respond. Sometimes it's because this is hard. If you change this, right, um, then the focus is still on this menu and you have to press escape before anything sensible will happen. Um, and then sometimes, it, I, who knows, right? and sometimes it bongs at you and no one knows. If you search the internet, you can't find out why. Um, but anyway, enough about Adobe's uh, strange architecture. Uh, so I'm going to collapse this now. So, so I don't keep the layers. I'm not really interested in keeping all that around. Um, the next thing we're going to do is I think maybe look at a little bit of um, dodge and burn now. I tend to do this in quite a lazy sort of way. Um, you could do this, there are many ways of doing it, and we might try a couple of different ways on this, but 
first of all, I'm just going to try a bit of a global adjustment. <clears throat> I'm going to produce a new duplicate layer, set the blend mode to screen, and then we're going to go into the layer, st layer styles box by double clicking on the right hand side of the layer. And we're going to use these blend if sliders. You could do this with curves layer, it's not just too dissimilar really. Um, but I'm, I find this quite visually quite um, an effective way of, of tuning it. So I'm, I'm looking to um, just the edge of, I'm going to do the legs I think first. So we're going to go to just the edge of where the, the brightness level is and then split this slider and just bring it all the way to the right there and then maybe just mess around with this. So I really just want the highlights uh, to come in. And now look at that and yes, that, that is looking good. But obviously it's applied to the whole image and we don't really want that. So we're just gonna take it off on a black mask. And get a white brush. And we're just gonna brush it onto the places where we want it. I might try it on that little silver thing there and maybe down this corset as well maybe on the little brace there which is kind of got on upside down but don't tell anyone um, right so let's do another one for the top half um, because that's a little bit too aggressive for the top half so we're going to set the sliders in a different position so we're going to go a lot further to about there I think bring that in just look at the the image overall mainly on the face and upper body I might have to do a separate one for the face actually because I like the arms there the arm of the chest there but I think that's a little bit too aggressive for the head so um, we can either do another one or we can just not brush it back at full opacity on those areas. So we're going to 100% at the moment. I'm going to brush that across there and across all these other areas. Although it's not going to have much of an effect on there. Maybe go around that little bit of hair there. Um, but mask it off the face. And then I'm going to go to, let's say, 30% uh, back to white go over the face maybe do another pass on the lower end there we go let's see what effect that's having now it's going outside the lines a little bit here um, so I could just for this one I could just use the brush and take that off but it's worth demonstrating this technique all right so um, I can mask um, the whole of this for the subject so the first thing to do is we go to the background layer um, press W which will select the quick select tool but you can you can use any of the selection tools for this because they'll all bring up this button select subject I'm going to click on that and Photoshop is going to do its thing and um, hopefully work out that the subject is some kind of Amazon warrior and it's not done a reasonably bad job right um, just missed a bit in the middle there for some reason um, but it's this edge, which happens to be the bit that we want, so that's fine. Um, and um, we'll just get rid of this. Uh, so I'm just brushing on it with the quick select tool with the L key held down, just to remove those random bits. Um, but it's just excluding these bright areas here. Um, we could just uh, put the arm back, couldn't we? There we go. Okay, I think that'll do. Uh, I'm just going to save that just in case I need it because uh, I made a few adjustments. Uh, so just save selection. Save it under weight. Um, and um, we will now use this as a mask on these two layers, but they've already got masks on them. Um, but we can have, you can have multiple masks on layers by putting them in groups. Um, so you could put just one layer in a group. If you want two masks, put it in a group, put another mask on the group. So with this selected, I'm going to select Add Mask. And now that restricts it to just where the um, uh, figure is, where that selection was. Toggle it on and off just to make sure there's nothing else untoward going on. 
any crustiness near the edge from the selection and um, I think that's doing a reasonable job. Um, the only other one I might do is the sword itself. Let's see um, what effect we can have on that. So just watching the sword, it's like going to the opticians, isn't it? Yes, yeah, just watching the upper left letters. Um, we're going to just see if we can just get just the edge of the um, highlights on the sword. Bring those down. And then just watch the sword and turn that on and off. And I think, yeah, that's that's pretty cool, actually. Um, so let's put a mask on that brush. I'm going to put it back to 100%. Reduce the size. Just brush it in there. Just gives us that little edge on it. Don't want to do that. It's just that bit really. Let's just take it off any two bright areas. Now that I've restricted it just to that, I might go back to the um, layer style. Just mess with that. So, but I don't want it to increase because that's going to decrease the contrast if it just raises everything up. So what we'll try and do is um, just find that other slider there. Just bring them close together. That starts to... So let's go find the... Uh, I think that's as good as we're going to get it in, in one pass to be honest. It's like that. And let's see what that layer looks like on and off. And reduce that by 41%. There we go. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do some other things to the sword in a minute. Um, because it doesn't really have an edge, this sword. It's uh, what they call a practice sword uh, rather than a prop sword. So it, it's um, made to simulate the weight uh, of a real. Um, metal sword um, but it is made of plastic so it's thick it doesn't have an edge at all on it it's completely rounded but we can simulate an edge uh, we'll just draw an edge uh, on it basically um, and we'll have some fun trying to then hide that drawing behind the the fog uh, but we can do that with the blend of sliders again so let's flatten this we don't really want any of this stuff and um, i'm going to make a new layer just a blank layer we're going to get as close in as we can on this sword. And essentially, this is rounded here, and we can see that it's rounded because of that sort of gradation, that gradual um, adjustment of, uh, of tone um, around the edge. If it was an edge, it would just be, um, it would be a flat area, you know. Um, it would be the same tone all the way uh, over that bit. So what we can do is draw an edge and, uh, and make that happen. So to do that, let's make it a little bit smaller so we can get it all on. And the cleanest way to draw an edge like that is to use the pen tool. So I'm gonna get the pen tool and we'll just start down here. We may not use all of this but because we can mask it off later. And uh, I'm just gonna start off going up this edge and I'm just clicking and dragging uh, to get the handles because this is a curve. Well, actually, we don't want that, do we? So we're making a an edge. So we don't have to be super accurate at this stage with this because we we can adjust all of these points. But the idea. So I'm making a little tapered edge. Oh, what happened there? And we can join it up there. Okay. Right, now if we hold the control key down, we can now select this path and then click again to select the node. And now we can move these about. We want to get this edge to follow the um, existing edge of the sword. We can pull these little handles about. And I want to go slightly outside it, I think. And 
because I don't want bits of the original saw to be showing through. Now if you do make a mistake like that, just press Ctrl Z, it's easier than trying to adjust it back. See that one's a little bit too far over my zoom in a bit here. Try and be accurate with these things and the, the closer in you do it, the more accurate it's going to be. But we also know that this is pretty much a straight line with a very broad curve to it. Going down this bit. Now, the inner curve, this is our kind of made up bit. Um, but let's just adjust this bit a bit more. I'm gonna get it to go around. Call that like so. That needs to come out a bit. I want to learn how to do the pen tool. Um, Picks imperfect. Unmesh Dinder has a, a lovely uh, thorough tour of the pen tool, and also Glyn Dewis has a very good video on the pen tool as well. Um, so I'm not going to go through it here, but. Um, just go and watch one of those videos. Um, it can be a bit daunting at first. Let's just see where that line actually is. Make sure it's on the line. I'm holding the space bar to scroll the image. Move the image about. Right, okay, let's zoom out a little bit because that looks a bit wonky at the moment. What we want is more of a curve on this, so let's as well, I think. If I move all of these in. Still looks a bit flat, doesn't it? There we go. Okay. That'll do. Now we want to then save this as a selection, or make it into a selection rather. Um, feather radius two pixels, that's probably about right. Um, I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it Edge. And now what we're going to do is um, make a gradient on that. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to go to this gradient tool. And you can see that the sword kind of reflects the bits of light that it's next to. So um, if we select that as the endpoint for our gradient, and then we'll zoom in here, swap the colors over, and select one of these highlight areas there. And we'll now get our um, gradient tool from about there and sort of drag it up to there. Okay. Now it has now created that flat edge. And if we just hide the selection, we can see that we now have a flat edge um, on there. Um, and if we just uh, toggle that on and off, see that we now have a, an, an edge to it and we've lost that sort of little and I like that little highlight thing there um, which is quite nice so in our gradient we can because we've already, we've already got the gradient selected by the way it's still selected I've just hidden the uh, marching hands so we can get our brush and manually dab in um, some of that uh, highlight there so if we get that 
uh, let's put it at 20% uh, opacity, 20% flow, and we'll go to whereabouts that highlight was, which is just on that edge there. Just put that in. I think that's going to look pretty cool. Yep, okay. Uh, now we might want just a bit more on the edge there. And you can see why, how, um, I'm just going to undo that because I've, I've made it a bit too broad. Um, you can see how what we're actually doing here is, is really we're just painting a sword. Um, and so the, the picture ends up being, you know, half um, photograph and half painting. This is not so bad. I'm not worried about that. And I should have done this on a new layer really, shouldn't I? But um, let's just go back. Let's get rid of that little bit there is what I'm waiting for. There we go. Okay. Let's go and paint it again, do another go. It'll just use the edge of the uh, brush there. And then we can paint in a bit. And just build it up, that's a bit too much. You see, it won't paint outside the selection, so I can kind of do it down here. And we might put in some... That's pretty funky. Um, one thing that I might do is just blur that a little bit. So, let's select, let's turn the marching ants back on. And deselect. Just draw around that bit. I'm going to put in about five pixels, I think. And blur it again. There we go. Let's just even that out just a touch. All right. Okay, so that's enough. We're going to do some more bits to that sword uh, in a bit uh, when we put our little sparkle layers on, um, on top of those highlights. But we'll commit that. There we go. Um, looking around the image, I'm going to do a bit more tidy up. I think we need to get rid of this, no, but this is a, an also a good, um, yeah, it is actually a label. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Xena Warrior Princess, dry clean only. Um, so we're going to get the um, quick selection tool. I don't use the uh, pen for this because there's just too many little nooks and crannies and things. And we just need to... Um, do a selection right next to the edge. Now we can't use the content aware fill on this really because it's just a bit confusing. If we selected that bit and said content aware, God knows what we'd end up with. It's such a small piece that we'll just use the good old clone stamp. Um, so we'll just get a soft clone stamp brush 100% and just get a bit of nearby um, texture and just go over that like that. And that's as simple as that. We can toggle the um, hands on and off and that's fine. 
Okay, so that's that gone. Um, I quite like all these little twiddly bits. Um, some people don't like them. Um, but um, I think it kind of just adds to the whole sort of chaotic nature of the character to me. There's, you know, tassels and things flying everywhere. It's a bit, adds a bit more dynamism to it for me. Um, so I'm not uh, worried about that at all. Okay, uh, what's next? Let's have a look at the eyes. I think they could do with being a bit brighter. Um, so we're going to use just a curves layer, a simple curves layer for this. Uh, bring the curves layer down here. And if we look at the eyes there, we can get this little finger push thing. If I hover it over the eye whites, we can see where they sit on the curve and they're about there. So I'm just going to drag that up to put a point in. But um, we also don't want, look at the blacks, they're about there. Okay, so the eyes are kind of between there and there. Uh, the rest of this doesn't really matter what happens to the curve outside of those two points. So I'm going to drag that one up and this one down. And it's going to put highlights in the eyes, but keep the blacks, uh, keep the contrast in there. And obviously it's done the whole image. So we're going to invert that mask. And I'm going to get a big brush or a soft, soft brush rather, put it at 100%. Oops. Yeah, come on. And 100% flow and in white. I'm just going to dab on each one and then change it to black. And just go around the edges here. So I don't want that um, coming in. I'm going to maybe do the. I don't want it to have sort of demon eyes. Just want to raise the whites really now just again to check which bits that we've missed any bits of the mask just do alt and click on the mask we can erase any bits of white straying around now zoom out you can see that's kind of too much i think um it's too much redness now in the eyes um, so one way we can deal with that is to get a hue saturation layer clip it to the um, curves layer and um, go to the red channel take the red out so wherever that brush has landed which is on the sort of eye there um, this hue saturation layer is also going to take effect um, so we'll zoom out and have a look at that and then overall, we can see what's going on there with both of those layers. I think, right, I'm just going to knock it back just a little bit. So let's get at 80% of that. Maybe still a bit too much. Let's go for 70, 72, maybe 65. I think still too much. Let's go for 50. Yeah, that's about right. We maybe could, I think it's still got a little bit on that sort of lower uh, eyelid there. So let's just make sure we go across there with a... Yeah, let's just brighten the eyes just a little bit. Okay, so let's flatten that. Um, lips. I think maybe they could do with a little bit more colour, so let's just put those on a new layer like that. Uh, set them to multiply. Job's done. <laughs> yes, it looks terrible. Uh, so first we want to restrict it actually to the lips. So let's put a black mask on that. Get the brush, white brush, 100%, um, but we want quite hard edge to it. So I'm going to go up to completely hard edged and then back off one. Sometimes you have to actually dab on the picture before it'll let you use the shortcuts. <laughs> you really need to fix this piece of software, Adobe. Um, that some of these these foibles and weirdness has been around since I've been using Photoshop, which was about you know CS2. Um, right, so I'm I'm really only going to worry about the um, inside edge uh, of this. And well, that was a really bad job, wasn't it? Let's go a bit smaller. 
and just follow those little lumps and bumps around there. Bit to fill in there and there. I can't really do um, the inside and outside edges with one brush. So I'm not worried about the outside edge at this moment. I'll just make sure that's all filled in. There we go. Fill it all in and around there. And then we're going to go around the outside with a black brush to take off the bits that we've just done. That's pretty bad there. Let's do that again. And you're going to find that you do this, you know, remember to lift the, uh, the pen every now and again, just to create another history step so that you can undo to a shorter piece of, you know, you're not going so far back that you're in undoing loads. If you're struggling to see the edge, just reduce the opacity of this layer so that we can see where the original lip edge is, so we can follow it. And I think I just carry coloured a little bit out the lines herself there, I think, doing the makeup. Now I've gone over the inside and I've torn it. So this is why I don't do it this way, because I'm now having to make the brush smaller. Um, and that in turn alters the feathering that I put on the brush. Let me see the edge of that. Let's right. So there is a bit more to do there. So I don't want to see this really from that far away. Right, once we've got that more or less right, it doesn't have to be spot on at this distance, um, we're going to ramp that back up to 100%. And you can see it looks pretty terrible at the moment. Fix that bit there. This looks pretty hacky there, doesn't it? Come on. Let's follow that line instead. That'll do. There we go. Right, and we're going to put a Hue saturation layer on there and clip it. Bring the saturation up. And uh, we also might just play with the hue a bit. But we're not going to get away with much on that. I think just a slight raise. And you can see this stuff here is looking a bit funky. So I'm going to go back to the mask um, and just take that off. That's having a bit of a weird effect though, isn't it? So let's put that back a minute. And um, maybe we'll put that to 50%. Just go around that edge there. And then put that back. But one of the things we need to watch for is, um, sometimes you spend ages trying to undo something you think you've done and then you find it's actually in the image. <laughs> Uh, in which case you can just put it back. So let's go, we're on um, 50%, so let's go to 100%. Just trying to avoid mostly those um, black bits because they're actually inside the mouth. So that's not really, come on. Keep forget to press the X key. Right, okay, there we go. Right, next thing we're gonna do, take this off the highlights. So we wanna preserve all that sort of a glossiness, if you like. I could try just taking it off the, um, and just feather that to pull those sliders apart. No, that's not gonna work. Let's let it leave that alone. Um, now, this is a particularly awkward 
um, piece of lighting on it because we've got a bit of edge light coming in as well. Um, so I don't really want that business up there to light up too much. It's about there. It'll be okay. And then we're going to just reduce the opacity of this down to about 30 odd percent. Let's have a look and see what that does. It's coloured it in quite a bit. Well, the important thing is it kind of looks a little bit too lipsticky at the moment. So let's go back to the hue saturation. Let's take some of that saturation back out. Play around with the hue. That just makes it muddy, I think. So let's leave that there. So before and after, before and after. Now I'm getting darker. We might try changing this back to normal because we don't really need it to be on multiply now. And that's actually making it lighter. So let's go to back there. Play with that and then we can play with the lightness to take to make it darker rather than using a blend mode. This just adds black, basically, um, and tune it like that. That's kind of getting closer to what I want. It's just a more of a deepening of the, uh, the color rather than... Uh, I don't want to make it look like she's gone into battle with lipstick on, so we just want to make the lips a little bit more saturated, really. Zoom all the way out. What do we prefer? It's definitely not like that. It's definitely not like that. Um, in the middle, I think it's sometimes you do these things and you think. Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to do this at all. So what I'm going to do though um, is just save that selection <clears throat> that we painted on um, and do something else to the lips. So we are going to put these layers in the bin and we're going to bring that selection of the lips back and put it on its own layer and we're just going to accentuate the highlights. So we're going to get our old friend's screen and we're going to zoom in. Obviously that looks terrible but we're going to use the blend if sliders and just limit it to just the highlights. Now because this is a, on its own layer there I'm not too worried about excess bits of highlight appearing where I don't want them because I'm going to mask those off again. So it's just going to go there, I think. And we'll put a black mask on. Brush, now we want to make this soft again, so all the way down. White brush, we're just going to go over those bits, maybe just a touch on there. But we don't want this, really, um, so I can just elect not to have that. Um, I'm going to zoom out and we'll see what that does. There we go, pretty funky. Just reduce it a little bit. Go for about 75, I think. There we go, nice highlights. Right, what's next? We've got nails on this, which was lucky. Uh, I think they fell off later on in the shoot, but we still had them at that point. Um, nothing much else I need to do to skin or anything like that. What we might try is a little bit of um, some high pass layers now. So if we go make a copy, take the colour out. Now doesn't that look pretty good actually in black and white? I quite like that. Um, and this is sometimes, you know, when you do this and you, you're doing some sort of adjustment layer and you have cause to, to make a black and white and you think, Wow, actually, yeah. <laughs> it usually means you stuffed your colours up. 
Um, so it's actually a sign that yeah, the colour's there. If the black and white, if you take the colour out, it looks better. Um, oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Um, you know, yeah. Um, I still think, I mean, it looks good in colour, but I actually do quite like that black and white a bit too much. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll, um, we'll make a black and white copy at the end. That's really easy to do. Um, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to try and accentuate some of these little uh, shiny bits. So if we go to um, other high pass and um, I think for this we're going to go for around sort of 40 odd, something like that. So we start to see these little things show up. Play around with some other values, so around the 20s. Yeah, but it, it, it is going to be around the sort of 44 mark. Um, and we're going to blend that with soft light, I think. Could try overlay. Overlay's a bit more. Um, hard light, even more. You know, go down these blend modes and have a look. But I think soft light's going to be the one for us. Let's just see what it's doing. And we look at the bits um, down here. Um, where we are interested in, in, in all these shiny bits as well. Um, but obviously we don't want it on the skin or other. Let's have a look around the fog itself because it, it brings detail to the fog, but it's tempting sometimes to put detail on fog, but then afterwards I always regret it. So we look at the sword. I think it's doing some pretty good things to the sword. Um, so let's put a mask on and then we can get our brush again and just put it where we need it. So let's make that a bit bigger. 100% soft brush, white, and we're just going to brush on uh, some of these little uh, areas, put some shine in this leather. Try it on there. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, up there. Uh, that looks kind of all right. I don't, do we want to accentuate that? That's okay. Get that little shiny bit there. Um, does it do anything for the hair? I didn't check the hair. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's do the sword as well. That looked pretty funky. Right. Make sure we've got the bits that we want. Hair maybe too much. So let's go to 50% on the brush. Change to black. Just go over it. Knock that back a bit. That little highlight there was too strong in the first place, so we'll just knock that out completely. There we go. Any other problem areas? Uh, that looks pretty good to me, actually. I think maybe this is a little bit too strong, so let's just go over that 50%. Maybe that too. There we go. Pretty cool. Now, does it do anything for the skin? Not really. Let's take that off there. Okay, and we're gonna have another one of these just for general sharpness. So again, we're gonna go filter, other, high pass. Um, but this time we're gonna go for low value. So we'll start off with three, but again, that, that looks way too much. Let's do two. Still, oh, it's because I've got both. Selected. I can't see it, that's why. Duh. Let's just take that off there. Filter other high pass. And go to three. Yeah, that's about right, I think. You want it so that you can just about see the edges. And for this one, we're going to go overlay and just toggle that on and off. Do this at a few zoom levels though, because you find out that this can bring back way too much texture into the skin. So, and it's just a little bit too much, not too bad, but we're going to put it to about 83, I think. Put the other one back and put those in a group. And now we can see. Our general sort of levels of sharpness uh, looking pretty good. Okay, all right, let's flatten that. 
Right, so let's have a think about um, some sparkles. There's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, I've started using um, a piece of software called Boris FX Optics. Uh, so Boris make um, filters that are used in the movie industry for doing things like flares. If you've seen Star Trek, then uh, that's what they used. Um, was the sapphire filters in uh, um, from Boris. Those are licensed at thousands of pounds per use per movie or something like that. Um, but they've rolled up all the filters for use in Photoshop for stills for a hundred pound or thereabouts. Um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I mean, just the flare engine alone is worth the money for me, but there's a few other things that I use in there uh, or have started using. Um, the little um, sparkles and star um, sort of highlights that you can do. Uh, and of course it's automatic. But before before optics, I was using a brush to do it. And I think that's what we're gonna try first of all. So we're gonna have a new layer and set that to screen. And I'm gonna duplicate that so I want two screen layers. And I've got some brushes. Um, I, I, in all honesty, I can't remember where I got these, but you just need to Google for um, lens flare brushes. I'm gonna start off with this little blobby one here. Now the light that's reflecting off needs to be of this, a similar sort of colour. So I'm going to select the colour there, um, but it needs to be bright. So we're going to go up in a roughly sort of 45 degree angle. Um, and we're just going to pick a point on this blade uh, for some little sparkles. And uh, you know, in the middle of this highlight would be a sensible place. I'm just going to put it back there. Um, zoom in and do this a bit more accurately because uh, that's a bit high. So it needs to be mostly on the metal. There we go. And that's about right. Um, now that one looks a bit lonely on its own. So we'll put them in. If I might just get them center of that one. Put another one there. No, that's too much. Don't want too many. Uh, and maybe Nope. It looks a bit extra there. I think we'll just go for the one. Now, anything else that might be sparkling on this? Not really. Um, this looks like it might have a. But I think that's going to be a, a white sparkle just there. And I've got the brush on 50%. <laughs> that's why this isn't working. I thought that's not looking intense enough. So let's go and get that color again. I told you this was useful for it not to be edited, right? Because you'll do these sorts of things and then think, oh, why isn't that working as it normally does? Because uh, you've, you've done something wrong. Um, so let's try that again. Yeah, that's a bit more like it, isn't it? Now, some, let's just experiment with the size. Let's try going large. I think that is too big, isn't it, really? Let's, um, let's see what that looks like. If I reduce the opacity. Yeah, I think it's just, just becoming vague. So let's get rid of that. And reduce it down. We just want a little... shine on there. It needs to come in just a little bit. I could put a little little one down here actually because it's on this inside edge. There we go. That's the ticket. Right. Uh, we got rid of one of the layers. Because we need another I'm gonna layer on another brush which is this one. Which just gives more of a, a fan out to this. Get it about the same size. Missed. There we go. And I'm going to put those in a group. I'm going to reduce the opacity. There we go. So it's a nice little glitter. Maybe knock it out just a little bit more. And there we go. Right. Um, what else can we put in here? Um, Let's just reduce, flatten that down. 
Um, now I've also been putting star fields in, in, um, in Boris. Um, one thing we might try is just using a star field brush. I think I've got a few of them are knocking around here somewhere. Um, are those, those, these are definitely star field brushes, but they look a bit much. Um, let's get a sort of a broad one. Um, put the brush size up to maximum and see what that does for us. So on a new layer, um, we are going to use um, a white and we're just going to brush some stuff in and see what happens. Uh, I'm going to put that on screen, I think, on screen even. Brush that, that's too much. Um, let's see if any of the other brushes will do it. Something we might do is some particles in a minute. Um, just some sort of glowing embers, I think that would be nice. But before we do that, let's put the night sky in. So instead of that layer, I think we'll, we'll use Boris FX. You can have a look at it then. Um, even though you might not want to do this yourself. So you just want to duplicate the layer. Fire up Boris. Here he is. I'll go down there. And all I'm really going to do on this, I think, is to put in the uh, night sky, um, which actually renders an actual accurate star field as seen from Earth, um, which is pretty funky. And there it is, night sky. See, we can have lightning and some other stuff as well. And I usually just go for the default thing. Um, now, we're not going to want it everywhere, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, However, we, I think I don't, that sort of blob is in the wrong place. So we're going to adjust the parameters. And now we have to decide what um, date we want and what latitude and longitude we're going to view the stars from. Um, so let's go wait for it to shift to the kind of adjustment mode. And then we can scroll the stars around a bit. Uh, that's possibly not the answer, that one. Um, let's have a look at the azimuth. That's, yeah, okay. Or well, something a bit more like that, I think. I think that's, that's pretty much it. Um, do we want anything else from Boris while well, we're in the Boris shop? Uh, don't really want any lightning, I don't think. Um, that would be too much of an attention grabber. Um, we could put a flare in, but I'm not sure that would make too much sense in the context of this. Uh, we've got clouds aplenty. We don't really want a moon or anything like that. Um, I think we're probably going to leave it for now, I think. I'll put some particles in. Um, don't have particles in this version. I think they come in, actually, to optics. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, some funky stylizations. I don't think I've ever used these, to be honest. These look a bit too sort of gimmicky for my liking, but um, the render and the light stuff. You can actually do, you know, general image adjust adjustments on this as well, which is quite nice. Grads and tints and things, again, no real reason to do those in here. Again, and blurring and stuff. We just do that in Photoshop. Um, some of these engines are, are, uh, are better than the Adobe ones. Um, the masking thing is pretty cool actually um, but I am going to do that in Photoshop anyway um, I think that'll do for that uh, we don't want it to be too uh, in your face um, so we're just going to render that and then mask it off 
where we don't want it. I think it just fills in some of those blank areas a little bit. I quite, I quite like this in combination with uh, fog on set. Um, this takes random amounts of time. <laughs> so that one was pretty quick. And uh, it's gone back to um, Lightroom. <laughs> there we go. Um, but um, back in Photoshop, we can now get our um, regular brush. So let's go back to the big soft brush. I'll go back over there. And um, we're going to put, uh, I think we'll start with a black mask. I think it'd be easy to brush it on rather than try and uh, take it out. So white brush. I'm just going to brush that star field back in there. Let's go over there. Put a bit in there. Do, I'll just go over some bits and then take it off again. Um, we don't really want it down here. This would be sort of the ground down there. So let's just make sure that we haven't got any on the sword. So let's go back to uh, Back to black. Let's take those out. Photoshop's got all kinds of automated tools for masking and selection now, but sometimes it's just easier just to use a brush. And we'll just do that and see if there's any. Don't want any, any on the face, on the hair. Here we go. Arm oh, either. Want any on there? Quick check down here. Yeah, well, I don't see any more. Do you? <laughs> Let's just check the mask, um, making sure that we've gone to the edges and that there's no bits of face and hair. that and see where is that going that's the right that's fine oh there's one or two down there Look. let's get those so there's a bit of a sort of a pattern on this sword and obviously our flares look a little bit false close in but I'm not too worried about that okay that'll do it's good enough for our star layer there we go let's get rid of that and um, what else would we like I'm going to glow it up again in a minute I'm just looking around to see if there's any kind of other uh, effects that we might want to apply to this before we do that um, I might do the hair. The hair doesn't look too bad actually, but close in you can see it's a little bit crinkly. So let's select the hair. Now I could just do the whole layer, but um, this computer is quite old and um, this filter can take quite a while, but it's the good old oil paint conversion filter. This is, this is the kind of the gimmicky thing. This is the first thing you pressed, wasn't it? when you first saw Photoshop. Uh, sweet, I can make my picture look like an old painting. Um, I have everything ramped up to 10 at the scale of 0.1 and the bristle detail of 0.1. Lighting is coming from above, which is correct. Um, and we're just gonna okay that. And it's kind of smoothed out the hair, right? And made it look a bit more graphic. Obviously it's gone everywhere else, so I've made that selection. So we're gonna put a mask on there, black mask. Then you get the brush, white brush, soft edge 100% and just paint it just on the hair or the middle bits of the hair and it just makes it look more sort of flowy uh, you know because you're yeah, with it let's do this side now we don't want to do it on the sort of flyaway details because it's more space than hair and we don't really want it on the edges either so i'm going to take the brush to black just a broad brush and just go around the edges of course we don't want it on any skin 
areas so I'm going to go just around the edges there make sure there's none of it on there and we'll have a look at the before and after I've also added a bit of light on that um, filter I'm going to zoom in just to because when you what are we out here so let's go to 50% you can see that it looks a little bit false so we'll knock it back a bit um, probably to about I think we'll end up going to about 60% I think it's a bit of a compromise because um, it looks best at 100% when you've zoomed the image out um, but when you zoom in if I ever print this uh, let's go for a 65 I think or 66 there we go execute filter 66 um, commit that <laughs> no going back um, let's see what we can do with the yellow um, color just see how that responds to a bit of pitch bending so we're going to go to the yellows and just bend the hue all over just so that I can see yeah it is just the yellows it's got selected um, no, we definitely don't want to go that way, but I'm wondering if we make it a little bit more orange. What do we think? Yeah, I think so. I think maybe not that much. Let's go for about minus four. Yeah, just makes it more of a glow rather than a uh, greeny orange. Right. So the other thing I think we may do on this is add some particles. Uh, if for no other reason, then it's a useful point to demonstrate how to do this. So I'm going to go and get our particle brush. We may need to do a bit of setup on this because I can't remember what I did with this. Um, and there's, there's a good particle brush there. Now, as you can see, I've done some setup on this before because there's multiple copies of it. So let's take the last one, because that's probably the, where I ended up. And we're going to make it big. So there's some particles. We may do this on several layers, because we'll need um, particles at different depths, different positions in the, uh, diff depth positions in the image. Uh, so some may be in front of Kerry, and some may be behind. So let's let's have a bit of an experiment. Um, so we want some glowing embers, and I think we're going to go for this colour here. Uh, maybe make it just a bit more orange, a bit brighter. Now they're not going to look like much in the beginning, and I think let's say these are um, too much. Some kind of let's go to the um, brush settings and we'll check out the uh, dynamics. So, uh, shape dynamics, uh, scattering, color dynamics. Why is this not clicking? What have I done? I've got the brush. None of this is responding. Have I broken it again? No. Ah, now it's responding. How bizarre. There we go. Right. Shape dynamics. Um, I've got size jitter there. So there is a bit of size jitter going on. That's okay. Uh, scattering. It kind of looks all right, actually, the way this is set up. Color jitter, uh, foreground and background, that's what's going on there. Right, so we need to set up the other color. So color jitter is going to swap or select colors between the foreground and the background. I don't want them to be um, that dissimilar. So I think um, yellow and um, 
that red colour there, I think we're going to just brighten that up just a touch. Make it a bit more red. Um, let's try that again. Let's make it a bit smaller as well. Let's brush up there. That's kind of looking okay. They look a bit insipid actually, don't they? Let's go to, um, it's just that colour to a, a ready, more red colour. do need these to be quite bright um, because we're now going to in fact let's try that let's just try the whole effect and then we'll do some more brushing so on this we're going to go to uh, the layer styles and we're going to do some outer glow and the outer glow is going to be quite a deep orange I think there and well, we, haven't, we haven't chosen a colour yet that's why and we can just mess with the um, don't normally mess with the spread too much something like that Try changing that colour to a deeper one. So they're starting to look like particles now. So let's leave that on. But get rid of everything on that layer, I think. So we keep the layer style that we set up, but we're just going to keep, um, we're now going to go to, I think, a yellow, maybe not that yellow, we'll put it somewhere there. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go back to our brush. That's better. It's a bit dense. I think we're okay on that. Let's make it smaller. Mm, it's a bit dense, isn't it? Let's go. Two. smoothing just reduce the count there we go now let's bring it all the way back to one so we've got complete control over this and then I think these are going to be the foreground so I'm just going to put a few of those in there. There we go. Choose the size a little bit. Right. And I think for this layer, we're going to um, blur it a touch because they're in the foreground. They're going to be out of focus. So let's go to 10. Nope. Let's go to... be about 
Yeah. Oh, dear, well, what's that there? 25 is what I want, I think. Preview on and off. Yep, yeah. okay, that's about right for that layer. Right. Now then. Copy that layer style. I'm going to make a new and paste that layer style onto there. And this is going to be more of our sort of foreground thing. So we're going to make this smaller now. Sorry, this is going to be the background. Okay. So I'm going to paste some more of these things on. the layer style on there. I'm going to make the brush even smaller. All right, and for these two layers, I'm going to group those and we're going to go back and get our uh, model selection that we made earlier. And we're going to use that to take those layers off the model. Uh, so they're going to be just behind. And then further to that, that last layer there, I'm going to take off the sword as well. So we're going to have like some in front of the sword but behind the model and then some behind everything. So I'm going to put a white mask on that, get my black brush. That's my black brush there. And actually I'm not sure there were too any on there in the first place to be honest. Yeah. In fact, let's take it all off the um the sword. I think that that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. There we go. Right. Now some of these on here are a little bit unfortunate. I don't really want them. And that's on this one. So we might put that one back. Because uh, I don't want too many of these things. It gets starts to get a little bit too crowded. In fact, on this one, what we can do is put this to 50%. Let's just reduce some of these down because they're in the background. They're far away. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. There we go. Let's have a look at the whole lot. Maybe we could reduce the opacity of all of that, or actually fill, reducing the fill might. So reducing the fill tends to work on a non-linear sort of curve, so get that to about 56, 76, sorry. Right, okay, so we've got plenty of little um, particles and things there. Okay, I'm going to take them down just a little bit more though. There we go. Or, tell you what, we'll do. So that group there, I'm going to take those down because they're in the back and then leave the foreground ones that are slightly higher. So take them down a touch, maybe it's about 80. More of those than 50. So, yeah, 
Okay. That's what's useful to have things on independent layers, um, is that you've got a little bit more control, granular control over each effect. Um, but there we go, I think we're gonna leave that one like that. So that I think there's one final thing that I'm gonna do. It's just trying to get a bit paranoid about these um, things. Yeah, they do add to it. Um, but I am going to take them down just a little bit there. So let's do opacity on those. Now, does it make sense for them to be in your face and dull? I think not. Um, so let's just get rid of some of the more prominent ones, I think. Get back on the mask. 100% bottom, that one's gone, there we go, maybe that one there, let's get rid of those, right, I think that's a bit better, right, commit, flatten the image, there we go, right, we're just going to put a bit of glow on the highlights, a few ways to do this, um, again, optics has got a thing for this, um, but I'm going to show you how to do this in Photoshop. So we've made a duplicate layer and we're going to combine it with itself by using a ply image, which is just like making two copies and using a blend mode. Um, and what we're doing is, um, so we want the output, we want the um, source layer to be the merged layers, every, all the, all the colors. Um, we're going to use multiply to blend it with itself on hundred percent opacity. And we're going to end up with this. Well, this effectively now gives us a map of, you know, mainly just the highlights. And we're now going to put that back on a screen blend mode. And we're going to blur that highlight layer. And you want to blur it um, with the same amount of pixels, roughly uh, the same as, your, as the megapixels of your camera. So I'm using a D850 for this. So I'm going to blur it by a radius of about 45 pixels. And we're going to OK that. Now, obviously, we don't want that at 100%. Uh, so we're just going to knock it back. And they normally end up around sort of 23, 20% mark. Um, and it just gives a bit more filled in look to the image. Um, again, I don't necessarily want this everywhere. So I'm going to put a black mask on that. And I'm just going to paint roughly a over carry uh, with a white brush, 100%. Maybe on the sword as well. Just going to go around those areas. Um, um, now, I, I, I'm not using the selection for this because the glow actually extends outside the area of the model. Right? So if I use that cutout, it'll it'll look a little bit odd. But I don't really want it on these. These areas are already just too bold. Um, these kind of yellow areas here. So I'm going to take it off there. But everything else is going to benefit from that. I don't really want it on the background. Um, it's mainly really just for the model to stand out from the image a little bit. There we go. Um, so I knock that down. And the final thing I'm going to do in Photoshop is just put a bit of selective sharpening on the eyes, maybe around the hairline, around that sword edge, around some of the hair, lips, nose, pick out any little bits of um, shininess and metal bits that you want. Um, and I think I might just put a bit, give a bit more definition to this sort of um, hand area here in the fog. And as Gavin Hoey says, that's my final image completed. Well, more or less. So let's save it. Um, it is one layer, it is a background. If it isn't, sometimes you end up with one layer that isn't a background. If you get that, you can either do, I think it's um, create background from layer or something, but I just flatten the image, even if it's one layer and it becomes a background again. Once you've done that, you can just save it. Um, now, this is a 16-bit TIFF, um, which Lightroom generates. Um, I do not output final images from Photoshop. Um, it is 
just too confusing. <laughs> right? Lightroom is the way to, uh, to manage your images and output the final job. Um, I just use Photoshop as, a, as an extension. We launch it from Lightroom. When we're finished, we go back to Lightroom. I don't use any of this save for web, export, um, save as, save a copy, you know, save the whale. It's, it's, there's just too many legacy bits of software in there, bits of code from different versions and attempts at doing uh, image management. Um, just ignore it all and go to Lightroom. This takes a while. I don't know why, because uh, it's only one layer and the file isn't that big. It's doing zip compression, uh, but even so, it's a little bit um, of a lengthy process. But once this appears back in Lightroom, what we're going to do is some final uh, checks on uh, exposure, contrast, that kind of thing. Um, and that means that uh, you know, we can create black and white layers, black and white versions, sorry. Um, and it's good to do that after you've done the cleanup, um, so you're not having to do it again for each version. We can now create multiple versions of this from Lightroom and mess around with the colours and the, the white balance again. Um, in case we've changed our minds. You know, but I've got a feeling it's going to stay pretty much like that. If it ever saves. Just talking with yourselves for a minute. Ah. One of the other things I've done with these in the past is put um, other textures in that blank space rather than star fields, like bits of old castle wall and things like that. So Beast and Castle isn't too far from here. And I've got quite a few shots of it. Um, so I've tended to sort of put those in the background. This is taking a long time on this one. I don't know why, um, because this isn't consistent. Sometimes it takes like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. This is taking a long time. Tidy up. So back in Lightroom, those changes will appear in a minute, and then we're going to start fiddling with um, some of these things just finally, just so we can maximize the dynamic range as well. Maybe um, anchor the black point uh, sometimes just gives the, uh, the colors a bit of a kick as well. Still going. Yeah, you wouldn't have thought it would take this long to write what is likely to be a 200 meg doc. You know, I suppose we could have a squint at what the um, processes are doing. You know, eight virtual cores takes forever. Overall utilization, 37%. Oh, it's whacked up a bit now. There we go, it has finished. Awesome. All right, there we go. Right, let's have a little play with um, the colors. Let's play with the tint. I think going towards the green is going to improve it a little bit. Again, you can hold the um, backslash key just to see what the change is. And I think that is right. Um, it's brightened it a little bit. Let's take the um, black point down. Yeah, I think I'm just going to watch the image rather than the histogram. I don't think that's doing too much, to be honest. It's not really doing it any favors. It's just sort of posterizing it. 
So we'll leave that alone. Um, white point. So it's not bunching now. So we can go right up to there. We've just got a hot spot in the middle of the face. Let's just back it off a bit until that goes away. We've ended up at plus 15, um, which is pretty good. Okay, it's going pretty punchy now. Let's have a look at the vibrance. Just what happens if we do increase the colors? It's not good. Okay, and as promised, we'll create a virtual copy and do a black and white. So we'll start off just by doing a straight black and white conversion. Just hit the V key and it looks like that. Um, we'll go back down to the black and white mix. Let's see what auto does. Yeah. Um, that's not bad actually. Um, we can also try some of the black and white profiles. Most of these are going to look fairly awful. They're, they're not particularly brilliant, these profiles. The filter ones are sometimes pretty funky. I think we went with green, maybe. But no, not really. I mean, you can, you can put a bit of it on. Just dial it back with this slider, but I'm not convinced. Um, Let's go back and compare it to the black and white layer. So there it is in Photoshop, black and white layer. There it is in Lightroom. If we just take off the black and white profile, there's Photoshop and there's Lightroom. It's a little bit punchier, a lot punchier actually. Especially the yellows. Take that white off it. Now this is going to react to the uh, white balance and tint in different ways. So we send that more towards the blue, which is going to brighten the skin a little bit. I think somewhere around there. And this is going to require a bit more work, to be fair. Gone off it now. <laughs> I think I prefer the colour at the moment. But uh, let's just have a look at what we can do with the luminance values in the colour shot. I think we can maybe take them down. Right, we take them up, of course they become desaturated, but blown out. I think we'll leave them alone. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it uh, for retouching this image. So I hope that was uh, helpful in some way. I'll come back across here. Um, we've demonstrated a number of techniques um, in this editing session. Um, there's maybe one or two other things which I didn't need to do, um, which can be quite challenging, but um, that's pretty mainstream what we've just done. And we've done some things that are specific to this image as well, like the particles and the sword and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but hopefully that's given you the information to complete your image. So if you came to one of the um, workshops or tutorials um, and you've shot this stuff, um, you now know how to take it from what you left within the camera to uh, the finished image or or a way of doing it anyway. Um, I mean, you know, you can interpret that data and those images um, in many different ways. 
um, this is just how I do it and this is according to my aesthetic um, so I'm making choices as to as to what I want the image to look like you may want a completely blue model right? and I've done that on occasion sometimes that's the mood that takes me <laughs> and I think yeah the skin's gonna be blue tonight um, but there we go anyway I'll stop waffling now and um, um, we'll see you for the next one. Cheers.